Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, members of the legislature, Congressman Seth Magaziner, thank you for being here, our general officers, Chief Justice, and members of the judiciary, municipal leaders, members of my cabinet, and my fellow Rhode Islanders who are watching at home, including my mom, Willa. And I want to thank everybody else for always asking how my mom's doing. Good evening. When I started thinking about this year's State of the State Address, I thought back to the first inaugural speech I made in March of 2021. Rhode Island was in a time of significant change. We were faced with many challenges, and what we felt like endless, what felt like endless unknowns. At that time, I asked my fellow Rhode Islanders to join me, to come together as one team and meet that moment head on. On that day, I shared something I used to tell the players I coached in basketball. The team I coached was called the Rhode Island Shooting Stars. They were a group of young men from all different walks of life, family situations, and backgrounds. And no one thought they could succeed. They were underestimated as a team and as individuals. But through hard work and dedication, they did compete. And they did succeed. I'll have more to share about that, their successes later in this address. But throughout the team's journey, I always reminded them, good teams are built when talented individuals do their best. But the best teams, the very best teams, are built when talented individuals use their skills to help others do their very best. When I became governor, I believed that Rhode Island could do better, be better, than just a good team. I knew we could be one of the very best. Over the last three years, we've risen to that challenge. We've shown that it's our turn, that we can compete, that we will compete. And if we work together, all we can do is succeed. Tonight, I'm here to cheer on our home team and share our game plan for Rhode Island's future. I have never been more confident. The state of our state is strong and getting stronger every single day because of the team that's doing the work in all 39 cities and towns. In the end, it's about the work that we get done. And although I, have, uh, as much, I haven't had as much time to be on the basketball court these days, I'm enjoying my new role as coach of Team Rhode Island. And why wouldn't I be? Together, as one team, we've made so much progress over the last few years. Here are some of the quick hits from our record, a record that I share with our speaker and our Senate president and the members of the General Assembly. We reached the lowest unemployment rate in Rhode Island's history. Ninety-eight percent of our schools have improved attendance this year. Thirteen thousand fewer students are chronically absent this year. We have a record number of jobs at Quonset, our state's fiscal outlook was upgraded. We're ranked second best in the nation for young workers seeking a job. And we're ranked in the top 10 best states for raising a family. There's more work ahead. But tonight is about the people who are doing the work to make all this progress happen. Last year, we, we set a challenge for Rhode Island to reach Massachusetts student achievement levels by 2030. We're doing this by improving three main areas, RICAS scores, 
student attendance, and FAFSA uh, completion. When we set that goal, I told a story about a painter who wanted to paint the perfect sunrise. Every day, the painter would get up, ready to start, then he'd think, uh, this sunrise is beautiful, but maybe tomorrow will be better. Long story short, he never got it done. Last year, I said, when it comes to improving Rhode Island's education system, we can't be like that painter. We can't wait, and the good news is we haven't. 38 of 39 cities and towns have joined this effort that we're calling Learn 365 RI. It's a commitment, a commitment to prioritize learning in all our communities. A simple concept. Every home, every day, learning matters. We've built a remarkable statewide team who's doing the work on education. And within our administration, we have experienced staff leading the way. Educationer, Commissioner Anhalika Infante Green, who was recently appointed by the Biden administration to serve on their National Assessment Governing Board. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> Post-secondary Commissioner Shannon Gilkey, who has over 15 years of service in education, with 10 of those in higher ed, and he's reimagining our state schools, Rhode Island College, CCRI, and URI. Thank you, Shannon. And Jeremy Cipetta, our new senior advisor on education with my office, who has firsthand experience as an educator, a principal, and a certified superintendent. There has never been somebody as qualified in education sitting in the governor's office in, that I am aware of in the history of the state of Rhode Island. Thank you, Jeremy. And they're not alone. They're not alone in this effort. Last year, under the leadership of Bob Walsh, a nonprofit called Always Learning Rhode Island was formed to support our Learn 365 efforts to provide guidance to the municipal leaders who have signed those compacts. To date, they've raised over a half a million dollars with the help of the local business community and civic leaders. I'm proud that my wife Susan, a retired teacher, is joining the team as an honorary chair of that board. We know, we know that students who attend school regularly perform on average about 20 points better on reading and math than those who are chronically absent. That's why attendance matters. This school year, our work to dramatically improve attendance is already having a positive impact. I want to recognize Alejandro, a second grader from Webster Elementary School in Providence who is here with us tonight. In kindergarten and first grade, he was chronically absent. However, he turned things around and just received his, perf his first perfect attendance award. Alejandro. Alejandro. Keep, keep up the great work. <laughs> Wonderful. And Bella is here tonight. She's a student at Noel Academy. Because of circumstances behind her, beyond her control last year, Bella was chronically absent. However, she made the commitment to improve her attendance. And this year, she's on track and no longer chronically absent. Bella, Rhode Island is proud of you. Please stand up and let us recognize you as well. And the, and the story, and that story keeps on going. With us tonight, Halandra, a senior at Center Falls High School and a member of our chronic absenteeism working group. 
She's dedicating her free time to help us create attendance solutions for students across our state. Thank you for stepping up in a big way, Bella. Thank you so much. We appreciate your leadership. We're, look, look, we're serious about improving RICAST scores and closing the gap between Rhode Island and Massachusetts by 2030. Rhode Island began to move the needle this year, and, want to, and we want to ensure that progress will continue. That's why my budget will propose $15 million for math and English language arts coaching for stu students and professional development for teachers to help us meet the goal ahead of us. Let's get this done for our students. When it comes, when it comes to education, we are moving ahead as one team with strong educational leaders in the General Assembly, like Representative Joe McNamara. Where's Joe? Joe's around here somewhere. With, we, on board. And Senators Cano and Val Lawson. That team includes our municipal leaders, our teachers, our superintendents, our principals, local AFT and NEA union leaders like Frank Flynn and Mary Barton, who are with us tonight. Thank you for being on Team Rhode Island. Now, we're asking all Rhode Island families, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardians, to join our team and get in the game. Because it matters that in every home, every day, learning matters.